Exam review time uh, for question two rhetorical analysis. We're identifying and describing what specific textual details reveal about the writer's purpose. So we're only focusing on purpose to begin with, which they kind of tell you in the very beginning. Then identify and describe textual details that convey or reveal a particular theme or motif. Remember, motif is just a fancy uh, French term, actually, for a concept that repeats itself, kind of like the one thing that we did do, and this was with Gatsby. I think you guys remember this. We went to, well, for, first of all, I should probably find the actual prompt. Let's see where the prompt is. I think it's one of these. Maybe it's the, oh, there it is. OK, it's the last thing I clicked, so that's fun. Anyway. What's going to happen is this. With those two things that we're looking for, the actual purpose is always going to be stated in the very beginning. And in the beginning here, it says that there's a person speaking, Richard Love, and what he's doing is he's developing an argument, and the argument that you have to include in your thesis. Now, be with me just for a quick second. This is the only thing that really matters. You get a one out of one for the thesis if, if they see like the verbiage that they gave you. And that verbiage is going to be specifically, did you say what his argument is? Like, when the last year and the year before, they had a, a eulogy, and Obama gave a eulogy, and it was celebrating the life of Ted Kennedy. Like, and he said that. So it's not like you have to decipher it. Just use what they gave you. You know what I mean? So taking that a step further, your thesis is going to say that this person makes the argument that there's a separation between people and nature. That's your thesis. That's the purpose. But what he's trying to do is he's trying to persuade, take it a step further, like he's persuading people to understand the importance of nature, why we're separated from it, and he's doing that through rhetorical choices, through logos, through anecdote, through imagery. It's very graphic. And the whole time, remember he's talking about the car, like he's kind of being ironic and paradoxical because he's saying like a person celebrating the fact that they lived to be half a century. So he's basically saying like someone middle-aged, they want to get a Mercedes and do their part for nature and the environment. So they're going to get an eco-friendly one. Like he's being satirical and, and, and almost like a parody kind of. Like he's poking fun at some of these things. Now, if you don't pick up on the irony, that's fine. But you can say what he's saying is that the person's deciding, do I want to have like videos on the back of seats so that little kids can be distracted? Because the one thing that tends to happen is, well, the kids are complaining or they're, they're, you know, they're toddlers, whatever. So we just we give them one of these. And then here. And that's something else he talks about. So what is it that's separating people from nature? What do you think? Like, actually. You can talk. What do you think? Phones. Technology. Technology. iPads. He's saying that, what? Yeah, social media. It's not about, like remember on the road trip that he's talking about where people, he's like, people like us used to like look around and see the terrain and see the change and see the weather change and get to Jacksonville and then you go to Georgia and Maybe you're in the Smoky Mountains. You see the terrain and the topography actually change. And he's saying, we're spending less time seeing life and experiencing life because we're too busy capturing it, maybe, or looking at other people's versions of life. And that might not even be their real life. And we're trying, huh? It's all fake anyway. Yeah. And he's saying, how about we, you know, take a, take a little break and just take in what's actually there in existence not what other people's virtual reality is. What's the thing that we just did that was talking about intellect and, and people and, and the power of like bots and things? It was a Time Magazine post. Do you guys remember that? It was a synthesis piece. What was that on? AI. Yeah, AI, chat GPT. Two very different things, but yet similar. So when you look at this, what is the purpose? Is he effective? The purpose is he's trying to make an argument and persuade people to buy into this idea that we need to take a break. It's not that the car is evil or technology is evil, but we need to be able to have a balance so that people in nature can kind of like coincide. And that's really what he's getting at. And then you can take your, your pick. Use diction, the words that he uses, tone. He uses a lot of details, very specific, which is imagery. If you can picture what he's talking about when he describes being on the road and looking at the terrain, that's imagery. And what's attached to imagery is pathos, because it's emotion. He wants you to feel. He's only effective in achieving his purpose of persuading you if he gets you to feel something. Because if you feel something, you're more inclined to go 
do something. That's it. Bye.